because it will be short in his uh, you know deliberations. I would like him to give full room of opportunity to talk about the subject. Uh, so you will hear from him how he developed from a corporate job to a full fledged uh, you know um, blossoming uh, entrepreneur. Now that is something you young managers are looking forward to. So please listen to him. So give a welcome. Uh, I share the invitation with all of you later. We had the opportunity of listening to Mr. Shwas. I guess one of the sub of the world, the other sub We are so very fortunate. We have learned Professor Sam, HR expert, who has a lot of work. So they have actually he set the tone for the session. We should have taken the condition of the journey. I am a logistics fan basically coming from a logistics shipping background. So uh, as I'll take the topics forward, basically, Gyan, Darshan, was the first thing that happened before. So I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll, start, I'll give you a little bit of background on our industry, which is uh, logistics, shipping. My core business is shipping. Okay? Before I start on this, I, I, when I entered the Jaipuria Institute, I saw something in the, in the reception. And I'm very keen to know how many of uh, you have read the spirit of Jaipuria. I have it now. I have it. Can anyone record? Guys, good afternoon. Waiting, waiting for the answer. We need to spend two minutes on it. What's the first one? What's the first one? Right there at the reception. Just think. Right? So I didn't Yeah. So it's there, no? Any ask questions, contemplate, explore, new avenues, offer all what you think and what you become. Right? That's the first one to think. What's the second one? <coughs> you cross every day. Think. Learn. First one is think. Second one is learn. I don't, I'm not going into the detail. Third one is imbibe. Right? So, so we must imbibe. The fourth one, innovate. He's been talking about all these things, right? In this presentation. First one is choose. And the last one is lead. This chair does not have stories. Lead. So we must need to focus on what is there. Every day we come, every day we cross. Let's look at what is the spirit of Chapuria. I, I think the the, the spirit of Japuria invites everything what we all want to do, what we are all talking about. The agenda is uh, very simple. I will start with the industry trend. I am from a shipping line background. What I have done is I have just listed the top 20 operated careers globally. And the leader of the pack is AP Molar Group followed by MSC, followed by CMA, CGM, followed by Hapag, followed by Evergreen. And I was fortunately working for Evergreen for 17 years. They were number two in 2000, but, but by 2015, they have been relegated to the position of number five. Okay? And before that, I worked for APL, which is now currently roaming at around number 12. So these are the global scenario. A total throughput, total volume, which we talk about is around 19 and a half million, approximately 19 million container capacity global volume, comprising of around 5,000 odd ships, totaling 6,000, maybe 5 or 1,000 ships. Why I'm referring this is, there is a reason behind it, because shipping industry has been going through a little 
bad face. Bad face in a sense, as part of the logistics, so I'm trying to tell you what's it better. First the bad part, then we can talk on the good part. Bad part is that uh, there is an overcapacity, there's an oversupply, rates are depressing, rates are going down very badly, capacities are increasing, global throughputs are not going up. So the situation is the costs are going up, revenues are going down. So it's becoming more and more challenging as an industry. If you look at it, the, the, the rates which have gone down, this is, uh, there's a steep drop in Asian shipping rates all along. There's a slowing trade globally. There's a fall in the export orders from countries across the region, depressed demand. <coughs> finished goods are down by almost, uh, ships carrying finished goods are down by almost 30% during the year. Record low of, uh, despite a little bit of rebound which happened in February, March, April 2015, even there the depression or depressed rate structure in the bulk trade also, container trade and the bulk trade goals. What does it reflect? It reflects that the shipping trade is going, uh, what would it, overall a gloomy venture. Shipping is down, this means transportation is not happening, this means the trade is not happening, this means the volumes are down, the business is down. The sentiment is a little negative in our core shipping industry which does lead to uh, positive challenges in terms of logistics, in terms of uh, pre-shipment, post-shipment kind of solutions which we all are looking at, which we are all going to game in the near future. Decline is continuing because China factories, are, volumes are down, China business is down, China is the one which is driving the global economy. U.S. is signifying a little bit of improvement, growth rates are a little more positive, but overall China volumes are down. Okay. So that's how we, we want to look at it. The second slide which I'm look, uh, putting across is the global capacity which is there in the market and the kind of ships which they are operating. When these container ships started way back in mid-70s, early 80s, situation was with small containerization started happening. What is the situation now? The ships are carrying capacity of 18,000 to 20,000 container capacities. Okay. How many number is there? Is there in the picture? Okay. Industry trends is locally what about India, how many parts are there, how many ports are there, how many major ports, how many minor ports, what is the overall capacity and uh, what kind of situation do we have? How much is the coastline? Okay, so that is how we want to look at it. What is the current transport sector we have? We are one of the largest uh, in the world. We are serving a land mass of 3.3 million square kilometers and a population of over 1 billion. There's the enormous growth of transport sector in the last 50 years. Volumes of railway freights have increased fivefold. Passenger kilometers have grown sevenfold. Length of roads have increased. Surface roads have increased ninefold. Tonnage handled by India, major minor ports has increased sixteenfold. Air freight tonnage has increased thirtyfold. But do we have the supports and the wherewithal to do, manage all this? Look at this scenario. What is happening? Singapore, Mumbai, which is approximately uh, two thousand four hundred nautical miles. So the sea mile that you call it. That gets covered in four, five, six days. And what is the transport journey from Mumbai to Delhi? Any guess? It's two weeks if we add on the waiting periods, etc. Okay. So that is the transport situation. That is the kind of a challenge. That is the kind of challenge we are looking at in the logistics sector. In order to manage this logistics developments, they have come up with the quadrilateral uh, uh, situation in the market where they want to connect east, west, north, south, 
and all of that. Okay. Now what is this uh, uh, Netro going to do? They are trying to run a dedicated freight corridor. Okay. They want to run a high density freight corridor where the only the freight will try and move in one particular corridor. We try and move the uh, vehicle cargo in one corridor. We try and move the uh, container traffic. Okay. And along with the, this kind of a corridor, we also want to come up with the industrial zones, all those kind of things. This is 16% route, which is approximately going to carry 50.2% of uh, passengers currently, and it's carrying 58% of freight. What is the key objective of the dedicated freight corridor? Focus approach, aggregate freight, uh, focus approach, which I just referred, brake bulk and drives, seamless end to end solutions, reduce per unit cost of the transportation, because what they want to do is, how do they want to reduce the uh, unit cost? They are trying to increase the carrying capacity. How do they want to do it? They want to increase the height. Instead of currently moving 45 wagons on a train load, they want to develop it into double stack. Try and move it a double height. Okay. What do they want to do? In that, they want to try and increase the height from the current 4.2 meters to 7.1 meters. Lower the bed increase the height, carry double the number of containers, which is the compatible car. What other option is there? Lengthen the container, lengthen the train. From the current 45, make it 90. This means the current train is 700 meter, make it 1500 meters. Okay. Carry double the volume. They also want to look at, add on to the width. Why width? Because there are a lot of water to wheel cargo, there are a lot of sedan cargo, which is uh, which for which they need a little bigger place. Instead of the standard 3.2 meter, they want to look at 4 meter width. Okay. And what would be the carrying capacity? Almost 4 times. They also want to go in for a heavier axle load in dedicated freight corridor. Heavier axle uh, load will allow them to carry much greater tonnage of the cargo with the same vector. The, the, the truck density goes up, the maximum speed goes up, what's the average speed right now between Mumbai and Delhi, probably are not even covering, moving at 20-25 kilometers an hour. What is the average which is coming up? Now they are designed to run it around 50 kilometers an hour. So what are they trying to look at it? They are trying to look at it, increase the design speed to 100 kilometers an hour. Double the speed, double the volume, four times the cargo carrying capacity. This is the industrial corridor which we are talking about. Wherever the sole freight corridor will be there, they want to come up with the <coughs> hubs, industrial hubs. They are planning around 12 hubs in and around Delhi Mumbai corridor where the all related industry will come up. Now coming to the skill sets. Multiple types of skill sets are there. We have we are broken them into financial international practices, operational, and consultancy role. Financial is basically financial planning we are looking at, we are looking at forecasting, we are looking at cost analysis. What about international practices? Regulatory body it comes in. Laws and regulations, international trade and commerce. What about operational? Leads to mechanical skills, logistical skills, which we all want to talk about. Consulting, we can look at advisory to the clients, across logistics, optimization of workflows, work process development. What are the competencies uh, that we will need to have it, uh, to, to manage this kind of a show? Managerial will be regulatory knowledge, vendor management, negotiation part of it, negotiation, performance and quality measurement, global workforce, Currency markets and business knowledge. Tactical will be analytical capability to understand business. Process improvement. 
systems knowledge, planning and forecasting, cost saving and analysis. And what about operational? System knowledge, process driven, customer intimacy, communication skills, supervisory training, safety and security training. Okay. Now when we refer about these skills, I think the simplest ones which we discussed were attitude, aptitude, ability to do put in hard work, ability to put in uh, having a normal level common sense which is very very uncommon in the market. Because all our jobs are very very simple. They are all process driven. And what is the process move? You think through the process step by step you move on. And those are the skill sets. If we cut out all the jargon, the simplest possible way to put forward is that we need to have the basic skills to be a successful logistics man. And I, I think uh, if we, we are able to normally put it across, we should be able to succeed in life. Honesty, integrity, all these are the basic ingredients. Thank you. Thank you.